Season one of the Virginia State Only Challenge didn't go very well as we finished the season two and 15, but we did get a big win in week 18 against a rival in the Cowboys that did see us at least seeing some guys take charge of this team. And then in the off season, we actually did pretty well with the limited amount of changes we were really actually able to make with two big trades, starters for both the offense and the defense. On offense, gonna have Christian Derrissaw, and then on defense, gonna bring in Kendall Fuller. We also had a pretty decent draft haul, bringing in a running back who will be in the rotation with Herbert, drafted a new fullback who will be helping lead the way for the two running backs. Drafted a depth defensive lineman that may actually get himself into the starting rotation for the base packages. And got ourselves a developmental slot corner who will be the next up for that slot, guys. So we'll actually find some playing time if we ever come out in dime. But this is the team we're going to be running out with in Season 2. We are going to continue to have Gino be our starter. He did get subbed out for Willis when we really found out that the team wasn't going anywhere in season one. So we got the development for Willis and potentially may need to do the same if again, this team isn't going anywhere. Hopefully, hopefully that'll be different with the new playbook that's gonna focus a lot more on the running game with Herbert and the rookie in Richards that we already have unlocked as a superstar. So hopefully those two will be really good. Not starting Richards because he has a very low injury rating. So to help balance out those two and hopefully keep them both healthy, we will be splitting the backfield. Wicks is going to be our starting guy, wide receiver one, because he proved that he should be last year. Zacchaeus, who was one of our starters, he's going to get demoted to the wide receiver three or slot guy. And I still think while not going out in a lot of three spread receivers, I still think they'll all get fairly involved. Offensive line improves with the trade for Derrissaw. And we're going to start a young guy in Sorsdal, who I'm pretty sure was an off-season free agent that we picked up. That spot, not locked down for the future, but hopefully he will perform well enough for us. Rocking with Mo Ali Cox for one more year, but did trade for Jelani Woods. Over on the defense, I did make one change between the offseason video and this one, and that was Stills, who was on our practice squad, and he actually has, I'll jump in to even show you, he has really good run-stopping ratings with a 77, getting some of the boost from our coaches. So he's going to immediately come in from the practice squad and actually be in the starting spot for the base packages. Originally, we we're planning on using the rookie in Bush, who does have some block shutting ability, better than that of Barno, but... He's still lower than still. So we're gonna rock with Bush there. Barno will be getting the start as the edge rusher. And we are missing in week one, our best DT, our best defensive lineman in Tim Settle. Hopefully he bounces back. Urban will play a little bit on the outside, a little bit on the inside, depending on the formation. Outside of the defensive line, I think this defense is looking rather solid. So hopefully we're gonna see a lot better play this year. And as this is the start of a new season, I want to try to get to around week seven, then decide if we want to make a trade to start next episode. And then depending on how good or bad this team is doing, we'll see if it's another two episode season or if it's more and maybe we find a way into the playoffs. That sure would be nice. So let's jump on into this first game against the Bucks and just see how these changes that we made has helped this team. And we'll be getting started on offense, though we did have a holding call on the kick return. So we're starting back in the 15 with a handoff right down the middle. Herbert shakes the first tackle, had so much space he didn't know where to go. Still picking up the first down 11 yards play one. And I'm pretty sure that was Mo Ali Cox coming in to help celebrate, thanking him for making up for his mistake as we're now just past the 25, going back to the run, gonna see a lot of run. As we break to the outside, Herbert will pick up another about eight, nine yards. If you missed out at the end of the off season video where we talked about this new playbook, it's going to be probably 70 to 80% run with some play action sprinkled in as we find Maybe that one's actually Mo Alley Cox. Either way, we find a guy downfield. But this one is going to come back. They call holding 
on the tackle in Moses. So it will be a second and 11 as that was apparently well downfield. Going to be another play action rollout. Gino gets rid of it. It will be third and 11. Now when we get to these long down and distance kind of plays, we're going to see a little bit more passing. Trying to keep everything short and medium. As we go with the slant route, it's going to be Pascal for the first down. Both he and Wicks are going to be the outside receivers. And then, as mentioned earlier, Zacchaeus will come in for the slot. As we're out with the weak eye formation, will be a drop back pass. Passing more than I anticipated, but we go deep. Picked up, not picked up, but brought in. Pascal, down to the 27. Offense already looking vastly improved, and we haven't even finished our first drive yet. As we come out with a heavy look, two tight ends down to the bottom. Finally going back to the run, and it's actually going to be a loss of one. But we'll stick with a heavy look, though sending Pascal down to the bottom. An audible coming in here for Gino. As we'll stick with a pass play down to the bottom. Finding Pascal once again about nine, nine and a half yards. Apparently leave third and inches as we come back out in that weak eye. Look for a Herbert dive down the middle. That's at least how I designed the playbook. But no, they want to pass. Okay, we'll dump it off for that new fullback. He will get the catch and the first down. Schroeder coming through on his first play of his NFL career where he's actually you know, getting the ball. He's obviously been out there to help lead block as he does there. Not extremely well, but Herbert spins off the original tackle attempt and picks up four. Oh, he is getting a little bit tired out there. Hopefully we see the uh, running back switch out a little bit better. Do still might need to change around the slider for the substitution as it's a read option. Gino headed to the end zone, diving on in. Really glad that wasn't a fumble. Sometimes the quarterback slightly gets hit on the dive and the ball goes flying. Not that time. Gino puts us up. Now as the Bucks take the field, they'll be starting back of their 17 after a good stop from our defense. Their quarterback, Jared Goff. We'll see how well he does with this offense. In a lot of these state-only challenges, Goff actually does fairly well. And the Bucks have done fairly well, I would say, at least in season one. First and 10 for him, as Goff from the pocket will dump this one off. A hit from behind, but good hands from the receiver will bring it in. I'll count it, gain of five. As the Bucks will come out under center with a bunch up top. Play action, Goff going deep, has his man who definitely had all the space he needed. Finding six, that's going to be Hardman to about midfield. Again, when it comes to this defense, I really think... The weak spot is the defensive line. Everywhere else should be pretty solid. As it's a run down the middle, ends up getting stuffed. Good play. That was Green in on the tackle for us at DT, who's getting the start today due to the injury to Tim Settle. So if we could see something from these young guys, or even depth guys, that would be nice. And it's intercepted. Jumping right in front of the intended receiver. That is Edmonds with the pick. Honestly, I couldn't tell you which Edmonds is who. I'm just going to say Edmonds. And it is Terrell Edmonds. As we get 16 yards, it's not off to Wick. So we're passing the ball a lot more than originally designed with this playbook. If anything, passing game is actually going a lot better as we get the first down than the running game so far. But hey, as long as we're moving the ball downfield, I am perfectly fine with that. Seven yard gain there from Herbert as we are down inside the red zone. And as we try to do when we get inside the red zone, let's watch the remainder of this drive. Second and five down at the 18 with a strong eye. Will be a handoff down the middle. Herbert powering through. Gets the first down to the 12. O-line also holding up really well as well as we have a first and 10. Sticking with that same look. Play action this time. Gino rolling towards the top. Tries to outrun the defender and he does sliding down before the hit comes in at the four. Despite being, I think at this point, 33, 34 years old, Gino running well to start off with. As we go back to the run, Herbert stood up at the goal line. First and goal, though, for us. As we're not going to see a whole lot of traditional goal line packages with this playbook, as Herbert is in, capitalizing off of the interception from Terrell Edmonds, putting us up now two scores. Well, I would say we're off to a pretty hot start in this one. As we have a third and three, we give up seven Mecole Hardman or McColl Hardman. Honestly, still not sure which one it is, Mecole or McColl. KJ also picks up a nice chunk. Second and six, Sanders gets the first down. If they get inside the red zone, we'll definitely jump in. They need about six more yards, and that'll do it. 
So while the defense did pretty good the first two drives, letting up a little bit on this one. See if we're bending but not breaking. Knock on wood as it's a first and 10 for the Bucks. Inside the 20 going up top, overthrowing the tight end. Kaiser White in coverage there. Did well, also had a little bit of some rush from the line. So despite not really thinking this line is doing all too well, at least rating wise, not too bad to start this one. Though they do get the first down, Friar Muth across the middle. Now a first and goal for Goff as they come out with a heavy formation, actually a true goal line formation. At the five, it's a handoff to the outside, stretching and getting more yards than they probably should have, but not in the end zone yet. Down to the three for Sanders. As they'll stick with the heavy look, just flip the strong side. With just about two minutes left here in the first half, a diving fullback dive into the end zone. We'll get the Bucks on the board, 14 to seven. Now with about two minutes left and three timeouts, I do wanna watch this drive, see how well we do in the two minute offense. As we're gonna start with a heavy look, Pascal sent toward the top, he'll get the jet sweep. He makes a cut up the field, picking up the first down just about at the 40. And a play that could have gone pretty poorly, great adjustment from Pascal, will send us down the field now inside the two minute warning, and no Ali Cox can't squeeze it. Granted, it would have just been a game of about three, maybe four if we were lucky, so I'll take the drop. As we have a second and ten, drop back, throwing this time, Mo Alley Cox does the same thing, drops the pass. So he's really not helping himself stay in that starting spot, especially with Jelani Woods behind him. Third and ten, same look. Gino rolling, trying to buy time, in comes Allen, picked up, slammed down, will punt. And now it's almost a little bit of a roll reversal as with a minute 40, the Bucks will have their chance to find points inside a two minute drive. Starting back at the 37. They did use a timeout prior to getting the ball and a dropped on play, a dropped? A drop on play one. Wilson not able to squeeze it for him. Does work out in our favor though, second and 10 with a spread look. Goff from the pocket, going up top, and great coverage. That time, the other Edmonds. It's also fun that we have two sets of brothers on this team, both over on defense. Third and 10. Goff from the pocket, pass rush, headed in, and it's a blitz from Edmonds. The Edmond brothers just disrupting this Buccaneers offense. So after taking off maybe 18 seconds for that entire drive, We'll take back over at the 32, which is about where we left off at, as Gino going to the outside. That time is gonna be Zacchaeus with his first catch, gain of four and gets out of bounds. Not a whole lot of shotgun in this playbook, though we do have some of the bases. Haven't really gone to it yet, as that time we find Wicks, who does get the catch past midfield, or actually not quite past midfield yet. There was some drop issues with Wicks last year, but overall he showed that Apparently it's Mo Ali Cox that he gave those drop issues to. And in the second half, he's getting switched out for Jelani Woods for sure. But yeah, Wicks proved that he should be our number one guy as he consistently found himself open. And can we stop throwing the ball to Mo Ali Cox? He at least gets the grab that time. Third and seven, two receivers up top, one down to the bottom. Gino with a quick throw, going back to Wicks, gets the first down. All in our timeout, we have one more remaining. We're at the 37. About in field goal range, maybe a couple more yards just to be safe with a tight end screen almost that maybe nets us a few yards. Though we don't elect to call the timeout there. Quick snap, can we get a quick throw? Going up top, we have a receiver who gets an extra yard. Six seconds left and are we gonna call the timeout there? No, we don't need it. But we will send out the field goal unit Kicking from the 39, make it a 49 yarder. To go back up two possessions, that one is up and through. We had to move the punter, who was originally a kicker from last year, back to kicker this year, and in his first attempt, nails it. We, however, did not keep around the former kicker, and now we have a punter that, because there's not any other options, isn't actually from a Virginia's team, so we have our kicker doing both duties. And as we get the stop on third and six, just give up three, so this team, Definitely feeling a lot better. What are you, a negative three yard rushing touchdown. For, so it's actually a safety that we just gave up. Madden maybe do a little bit better. 
with your description of plays because it wasn't a touchdown. But as I was trying to say, Johnson is doing both the kicking and punting duties. Pretty quick sum up there. Garrett Wilson does get the catch that time as they obviously get the ball after the safety. Trying to march downfield, another big catch for Wilson. One yard rush, Goff, second and nine. 29 yards to Mecole Hardman or McCole Hardman. I just feel, I feel like I heard me call for so long that that's just what I say. Either way, Bucks trying to tie this game up, which they could do with a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Goff will hand this one off. Sanders through the DT in green, but a flag also down. And that one's going to be on the Bucks, holding on their tight end. Friar move will back him up first and 18. Under center again, Goff play action and getting smacked in the backfield on the blitz, Divine Diablo. He'll back him up even more as they have a second and 26 at the 28. So they need to get down to the two for a first down as it's another play action. This time a roll towards the top. Quick dump off will find their tight end for a couple yards. And that still leaves them with 24 more needed on third down again just for the first down around the two will be a pass from Goff sitting in the pocket he will unload down to the corner and well out of bounds pass rush came in he heard the footsteps so they'll send out the field goal unit this time from about the 33 market a 43 yarder as they do nail it will narrow the lead for us five points and as we get stuck on in here with this offensive drive we did make the change at the tight end spot. We're going to have Jelani Woods be the number one guy as we go up top finding Wicks, who does get a catch five yards. We also have made a change at the primary back spot, putting in the rookie in Richards. Hopefully I'll get him a few more carries as for the most part, he hasn't gotten out there yet. And the first carry we see is a first down rush. And a really nice first down rush. Saw some patience there, letting the blocks develop, and then when the hole opened up, he hit it. That's exactly what we need. As we do the, the same thing the very next play. Close to the first down that time, though, they mark him inches shy. But honestly, right now, this offense moving about as I was hoping they would. Would have liked another touchdown on the board as it's a stuff on second and inches. Make it third and one. Great play there from Carter and his teammate. Honestly, not sure who got there first to slow him down, but either way, a great play. On third and one, a even better play. Goodrich picks him up, slams him down. Really just have to wish for better blocking on that play. We're going to go for it here on fourth and three. Close to midfield, would really like to pick up the first down here. Though they cover everything really well. Let's try to get the ball to the outside, and we do find Wicks first down to the 34. As I said before, I'll say it again, proving that he deserves that number one spot at the receiver group. As we head into the fourth quarter, still up five, needing to seal this game up. I would love to see us win week one and this try to build upon that. Ace formation here, Richard the lone back. Patient running again, but the hole doesn't quite open up. Does still net three. But essentially, I would love Herbert and Richards to equally split the carries. If both get about 10 to 15 a game, I think that would be solid for us. So it's going to be a pass here from Gino. Has Jelani Woods, and that time he actually holds on to it. As Sorsdahl, that left guard shaken up on the play, he'll head to the locker room. And his place will be Silvestri or something along those lines. Probably not that, but something similar to it. Another handoff down the middle. Richards, he has just that patient kind of running mentality but unfortunately right now the offensive line isn't quite helping him out ever since the first two plays as we'll go hurry up second and 10 though Gino making an audible from the line will be a pass from the 13 getting it out just in time intended for the fullback but hit through it off so on third and 10 we'll come out two tight ends up top two receivers down to the bottom will be a play action roll towards the top getting rid of it towards the corner intended for Jelani Woods We'll take a field goal here. As long as we hit the field goal, Johnson would put us up eight points with about six and a half minutes left. Not too shabby. Hold down, kick is up, and Johnson puts it through the uprights. Now, as we still have a lot of games to get through, let's try to see if the defense can get the stop quickly here, though we do have at least an option. Third and three, and we do force the throwaway. Do they go for it? No, they actually punt that one away. 
Okay, well, we'll see if Richards and this offense can run some clock. I was trying to say that they started the drive off actually really well as Richards does pick up the first on third. Then they quickly stalled. Let's hope we don't. First and eight. Interesting. Okay. We'll take the penalty third or second and three. We do pick up the first down. Herbert checks in. Seven more Richards as we get to about midfield. Then lose to third and five. A sack from Josh Allen. We'll have to punt away and jump in here on defense. We were able to milk at least some of the clock, but about two and a half minutes remain for the Buccaneers. Down eight points, week one. Goff from the pocket, sitting, waiting, unloads, out of bounds. So far today, he's 12 of 20, about 150, and an interception. So defense doing pretty well, I would say. Even pass rush kind of working, knock away there. Intended to find Wilson, but couldn't squeeze it. Not sure which Fuller he's lined up against, but either way, Fuller makes the play. From the pocket, pass rush coming in again, and another forced throw away. So right now, the coverage definitely helping out this front line work its way there, because again, I, I think the highest rated defensive lineman we have is a 71. As it's loaded up deep, Goff overthrows Hardman, who had the defender beat by a good two, three steps. It'll be a turnover on downs instead. Now all we have to do is simply run out the clock, starting in field goal range two, primed to make that a two-score game late as Richards gets the first down to about the 15. Just over two minutes left, two timeouts remain for the Bucks, and we have the first down at that 15. Be a drop back pass, Gino. Just take the sack, I'm fine with that. Let the clock run or force them to call their timeouts. I'll take that too. Second and 18, back at the 23 now. Handoff down the middle, stuffed and the ball comes out. Herbert coughs it up. Buccaneers recover. 2.06 on the clock. One timeout remains. The weight of this game now sitting on the shoulders of Jared Goff. As they'll start deep in their own territory, dumping this one off. Close to the first down mark, second and inches. But that'll be their last free stoppage of time. They'll have to get out of bounds or use their last remaining timeout. Pass across the middle. Gets rocked. The Edmonds definitely having a good game in this one as it's a third and inches. Goff making a audible, perhaps, or just checking something. To the outside, that one's close, and they'll actually mark it a first down, though. I don't agree with it entirely. But with a minute 40 and counting, they still need to get the ball about 70 yards downfield, and they go with a run that goes nowhere. The defensive line and the linebackers have come ready to play today. Massive improvement from what we saw last year, last year. As they will check this one down, picking up the first down. Still yet to cross midfield, and they've wasted about a minute, maybe a little bit more actually. But the throw down to the bottom, it's picked off! Going the opposite way, not gonna outrun Hardman. But down to the 22, Fuller. And it is the traded for Fuller, Kendall Fuller, making the plays they intended to go to Fryermuth on the outside. Now, Gino just run out this clock. Herbert, don't fumble. But a great way to make sure we don't fumble is one, put in Richards, and two, kneel out the clock, as that is what Gino lines up for play one. Obviously, then the quick timeout. But with 57 seconds left, we could easily kneel this one out. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So as the last few seconds tick off the clock, it'll be a week one victory as we beat the Buccaneers with running this offense exactly as I was hoping we would, primarily running the ball, though we, ran, we didn't run the ball as much as I was actually hoping. Passed the ball, but passed it well, kept the clock moving, and the defense really stepped up in this one. I hope we see it throughout. However, that success does not continue into week two as we lose pretty badly to the Texans 28 to 10. In this game, we gave up 348 total yards and it was pretty well balanced. 193 passing, 155 rushing. Meanwhile, we had more passing yards than rushing, but that split isn't awful. Just need to see more yards coming from it. Individually, Kirk Cousins threw three touchdowns on us. We didn't get any interceptions, nor did we sack him. And Gino threw one touchdown, one interception, and was sacked twice. 
We did play against Zeke in this one, and he does what Zeke does in Madden's. Over 100 yards, 7.5 an average, and a touchdown. Meanwhile, Herbert did not run very well, 2.6 yards an average. And it doesn't look like we really got Richards out there much. Only three carries for 10 yards. I did set it to where these running backs are supposed to be switching, switching out pretty quickly, pretty often. Richards is now the starter for the, um, the third down back roll. And they're supposed to be subbed out whenever they get to 80 stamina and then back in at 90. So Richards should be out there a bit more. I might need to continue tweaking that. In the receiving game, though, Christian Kirk absolutely destroyed us. Three touchdowns on 76 yards and four catches. Pretty much all of his catches were a touchdown. Zacchaeus, pretty good from the slot. Don't know why he was getting so many looks because our slot guy isn't really supposed to be out there. One touchdown for him, though. I'll take it. At least, silver lining, Edmonds led both teams in tackles with 11. Were we getting any tackles for a loss? We did give up two to Hutchinson, but then Urban had two and Tim Settle had two. So the two guys along the defensive line who are both 71 overall did well in that aspect. There were it's just a lot of tackles for a loss in general. Then I, I am seeing a lot of Houston players on here. So it seems like the offensive line struggled a little bit. And the sacks we gave up, one went to Miles Garrett, so a really good defensive line here for the Texans, and Nate Noble, a rookie, who also had the one interception in this game. But that leaves us in week three where we have the Cowboys. Now the Cowboys, the Giants, and us are all currently tied one and one. So we're going to watch the Cowboys and the Giants game. How much we watch of these division rivals, we'll see, but at least we're gonna start the Cowboys at the beginning. And it'll be defense up first as, yes, we are forcing the Cowboys to not wear their white uniforms at home and actually rocking with a throwback as the rollout goes nowhere. Sack play one, gotta love it. Split that one between Urban and someone else. Either way, love to see the pass rush coming through. We did upgrade the defensive or the defensive coach primarily for the defensive line upgrades. As that ball pops out late, Tyreek Hill, though, does pick it up, but then maybe lost yards. Okay, weird, but I'll take it. I'll mark it a third and 23 at the 12. With three up top, sitting in the pocket, now trying to roll towards the top as pass rush coming in and will force the throw away. Defense does well as Mac Jones really was just running for his life on that drive. Now, as we get started offensively, Really hoping to see some little bit of some difference with the style, I guess you could say, of which we run this new playbook. We saw a lot of play action and a lot of more passing than I was hoping. Last week, though, we start off with the passing this one and works out well, picks up the first down. But I'm hoping to see a little bit more of some rushes to the outside as they do have Jeffrey, though. It looks like they actually just have a really good defense in general. Three superstars as we hand that one off. Wicks gets to the outside, picking up the first down on the jet sweep. But that's kind of what I'm wanting to see. A little bit more stretching the defense out wide just so that we can actually attack the middle a little bit more. As we go with a stretch, the next play, though, Jeffrey reads it very well. Look at the stop, loss of one. So second and 11, and here's finally a shotgun formation. Haven't seen us run one yet. As we come out with trips up top, one down below, right across the seam, down to about the 14. Jennings with the grab. Again, one of the off-season signees. He's not very high up on the depth chart. I want to say he's about wide receiver four or five. So it's another change here. Gino wanted a pass, going towards the back of the end zone and out of the back of the end zone. But it is strange to see how much passing they're doing, considering all the passing plays I have are rated like two, one stars. Similarly to the fullback dive that we go on second down, pick up about two. I'll leave us with eight more on third down as we're down at the 12. It's a strong eye formation. Gino dropping back to pass in the pocket. Pass rush headed back there. We'll get rid of it late. And we had Herbert if we just had a few more seconds left to throw, but Hargrave forced the bad pass. So we'll send out Johnson when I at least grab some points to start this game, as it'll be from the 19. Make it about a 29 yarder, and so far he's 100% on all of his kicks. Now while we've jumped into these games, the defense have seemingly played well. Obviously they didn't do that against the Texans, so I'm wondering if it's a sim versus watch as 
to when this defense plays well as a massive penalty, not going to help us out. It'll send them down to the 25 and we'll jump in from here. Mac Jones from the pocket will go up top and just miss his receiver. I don't know if you guys have been keeping much track of the 53-man cuts, but the Patriots pretty much getting rid of all their quarterbacks, but Mac Jones was definitely a strange one as he does find Tyreek Hill, who's just bouncing off these defenders, finally brought down at the nine. As he gets into it a little bit there with Razul Douglas, first and goal for the Cowboys. With three up top, one down to the bottom is their tight end. Mac Jones from the pocket, pass rush working its way back there and the hit comes in though the knee was down before the ball came out. And I'm honestly not even sure who they're gonna credit with that sack, but I'm gonna take it. Whoever did it, great job. About a minute 30 and counting, a strange rollout pass there will end up getting tipped away by Edmonds. Really had him fired up for that play. Third and goal back at the 18, Mac Jones from shotgun. As we do send a blitz, they pick it up pretty well. Throwing it to the back corner and actually out of the back of the end zone once again. So the defense does well to stand tall after the penalty. We'll allow a field goal attempt to take place here from about the 25. That one is up and through this game leveled up. But as we jump back on into the quick sim, Wicks picks up 14. Let's just see a little bit more of some chunk plays mixed in with some nice running as he picks up nine, leaving third and one, a throw away at the 41. I believe it's time to jump in and go for it here. We have a fullback that we drafted. Let's put him to work on the fullback dive. He will just get enough. Schroeder comes through for us once again. And again, We'll quickly jump back on into the quicker Sam. A throw away, first down, throw away, second down, third and 10, a throw away. So we got the first down and then went nowhere from it. Can the defense do well here for us? Second and 10, another throw away. Is it just going to be a game of throwaways perhaps? We definitely missed a play there that did not pop up as they have a, a had a first down. What did we miss? I'm assuming just the end of the quarter kind of threw that off, so... That's fun, Madden. Maybe clean that up a little bit. Penalty will back him up. Second and 10. Knocked away Razul Douglas. Third and 10. One yard gain. I will take it. Force the punt. Yes. So we'll take over. About seven minutes left in this first half. Finally running the ball a little bit. As we do pick up the first down with Gino and then lose two yards. Second and 12. Another throw away. Third and 12. 15 yards. Jelani Woods, who is now the starting tight end. Did make that change after the first game. There was an injury there for Adoree Jackson. Four-yard rush, Geno. Third and two. Three-yard loss. Fourth and five of the 35. Probably safer to punt here, which we do. Leaving four minutes with the Cowboys so they could maybe try to get something going. Another throw away. Third and seven. Throw away. Why are, are both teams just throwing the ball away left, right, and center? Geno picks up a little bit of some yards there. Then Herbert as well. First and 10, throw away. No surprise. Second and 10, throw away. Surprise. Third and 10, 10 yards. Pascal leaves fourth and inches. So we'll come out once again. This time with a weak eye running to the strong side. Good blocking up front. We'll pick up the first down with Herbert. And with it inside two minutes, let's watch the remainder of this drive. At the 42. With a minute 30, still have all three timeouts. Gino should have tossed that one out to the running back. He had all the space. Instead, we get sacked. Loss of six. And we have about a minute left now. Now a throw, a good throw from Gino out wide. Can't tell who that is. Wicks, I believe, gets the catch down to the 24. And we do call our first timeout there. Leaving just over a minute, 101 on the clock. From under center, Gino will drop back. Gonna find Jelani Woods, who gets the first down, about a gain of 12. Smith, 8 of 18 for 116, though. I feel like most of those incompletions, as we call a timeout here, are pretty much all throwaways. Just both quarterbacks being extremely cautious, not forcing anything. As we have a first and 10 ace formation, will be another drop back pass with a <laughs> slant to Wicks. Touchdown. First touchdown in this game comes just before halftime, as we'll take a lead 10 to 3. Now we just have to hope the defense holds on to that for about 55-ish seconds as Rondell Moore picks up a nice chunk. 16 more to Mims as... No, defense does not hold on to that. Isaiah Pacheco, 42 yards, levels this game up in about 20 seconds. Gotta love to see it. 
defense played really well that first game. Have been a little iffy apparently ever since, as we do head into halftime with a penalty for Mo Ali Cox. Okay, but we start off with the ball deep, so I think Madden broke again and didn't realize it was a halftime situation. Either way, we don't go anywhere and have to boot this one back. Good starting position here for the Cowboys in plus territory. As they pick up 13 yards, Rondell Moore, and are about in the red zone. If they get the first down, we'll jump in, and that'll do it. So really neither team really staking hold of this game, though the Cowboys, I would say, have the momentum right now, scoring just before half and now having the ball inside the red zone. With a pass down to the end zone, Tyreek Hill beat the corner. And yeah, most definitely that momentum now in the favor of the Cowboys. He beat Kyle Fuller on that play. As we pick up three yards here, offense needs to move the ball downfield and level this game back up. And 20 yards from Pascal is definitely going to help out. As we're close to midfield, though, then lose two yards. That's happening quite too often. Third and 12, we pick up 13. Wicks coming through once again. Five yards, Herbert. Second and five, one yard rush from Geno. Third and four, eight more Pascal. Once again, I mean, he's coming up big, at least on this drive. If we get the first down, we'll jump in. Second and five, we get three. Third and three, that math doesn't add up. And we don't convert. Fourth and four at the 21. And as we open up the fourth quarter, we're set to go for it on fourth and four. As we're gonna send Mo Ali Cox in motion from shotgun. Let's see if someone can get themselves open or if they cover everything. Loft this one to the sideline, dropped in for Jelani Woods who gets the grab first down at the 13. One heck of a throw there from Gino finding his man. As we have that first down at the 13, can get another first down at about the three. Wicks gets smacked across the middle. Luckily that ball ends up hitting the turf. It could have easily gotten popped up and then picked off. Second and 10. We'll go with a run down the middle. Herbert cuts towards the top, trying to spin off the tackle. We'll maybe net four on that down. Although they say third and eight. Felt like it should be more than two. But it is what it is. We'll have to take whatever yardage they give us and try to convert. And we'll be from under center dropping back. Gino down to the bottom, overthrows his man. Fourth and eight at the 10. I think you gotta take the field goal here. So send Johnson out. Kicking from about the 17 and a half, so 27 and a half. Hits that field goal, it's still a one score game. Four points, Cowboys up. And with our defense really needing to get a stop here, let's watch from the start of this drive as Mac Jones and the Cowboys start at the 24. Be a stretch towards the top, they have the space. Why a defensive lineman was eight yards downfield, I don't know, but Pacheco picks up about nine and a half. That'll leave up inches on second down as they come out two tight ends down to the bottom. Play action and Edmonds on the blitz gets the sack, make it third and eight. Now we just have to get the stop. Force them off the field as we come out with a double A gap look. They'll drop back into coverage. Get the hit in there on Jones and good tackle for Missoula Douglas. I thought they're about to take that quick screen for a first down. No defense gets the stop we need. Now I know exactly how I would run this drive here with about five minutes left, but I'm very curious to see how the CPU is gonna run it. As we start with the ace formation, Gino starting with a pass, going to scramble, will get the first down, take the contact, and I thought I saw a fumble there. I think it was just actually Gino's shoe or cleat that I saw. He takes the contact, not needed, does pick up the first down as we get past midfield. Would have preferred a slide down, but it is what it is. As we'll finally hand this one off, Herbert down the middle, breaks the tackle, and maybe we'll pick up an extra yard after it, six yards on first. Though it still does not appear like Madden is actually properly rotating these running backs, so might need to have to manually do that throughout these games, just changing the depth chart as we go. As a decent run there on second down, need one more on third. Though I don't think the running game has done all too well for us but need it to come through late on as it will be a pass on third down, down to the bottom and caught by Wicks, then steps out of bounds. That was a close play, but Wicks bodies out the corner, picks up the first. Now from here, I would prefer we start to run some clock because I don't want to leave the Cowboys with much of any time as it'll be a handoff down to the bottom, cutting Herbert first down inside the 20. 21 rushes for him, 60 yards. I think we need to make a sub. 
So we'll send out Richards from here. With three minutes and counting, Cowboys and us all have three timeouts. We hand off down the middle, not going very far, just back to the line. And that was only the second carry for Richards. So yeah, Madden not substituting like I've told it to. So I'll continue to mess with that slider and hopefully we'll see some more as we just get one yard there on second down, third and nine. We'll stay under center, two tight ends to the top, plus a receiver, Wicks alone down to the bottom. As it's a handoff, Richards goes nowhere. Third and seven. Actually, no, fourth and seven. We're going for it. Ace formation. Inside the two-minute warning. Gino trying to buy time. Finds, but overthrows Wicks. That should have been a touchdown to take a lead. Just absolutely killer there. That opportunity presented itself. I thought Gino made the hero play. It's going to be a read option here. Mac Jones towards the top takes the hit. We'll pick up about six yards and a timeout called as Kaiser White has to take a knee. We were able to improve the depth at linebacker, but I don't want to be losing these guys. Devon Diablo will step in for him as he's in on the play, but doesn't get the stop before the first down. We have to call the second timeout. One more remaining as they have a first down. Ace formation, stretch towards the top. Pacheco will pick up about two, maybe three. Last time out called. No real animations for this for some reason in Madden 24. That's the one that we're on. Second and seven. No ways to stop the clock. Left Edmonds good fulfill. Not a great job speaking on my part, but as long as the defense makes the play. With third and five, hard count, no one jumps. It's an empty set for Mac Jones. First down, seals it, and he just inaccurately threw that one it wasn't even close Pacheco didn't even have to move to know he wasn't going to get it we'll have about 40 some odd seconds to try to grab a winner here with no timeouts left part of me wants to, to jump in here because we don't have the timeouts and we might just do that as we start back at the 30 or I won't actually be able to jump in because Madden is glitched and it won't let me exit. So it's all hands on Gino here to make something happen. As he rolls out, we'll find his receiver. Only a gain of four as we have 30 seconds left. That was Zacchaeus with the catch. Some play action deep across the middle. Nice catch from Wicks, but we have like 10 seconds left. No way to stop the clock without getting out of bounds. We don't just deck it into the floor and knocked away that'll stop the clock five seconds left all comes down to this play from the 44 we send four receivers out it's a quick throw and intercepted intended for wicks that will seal this game up a close divisional battle but it's one the cowboys will come out on top of with a 17 13 win Really close. We were so, so close at the end there. Grabbing that winner with the slant, developed slant there to Wicks, but was overthrown and we'll have to try to bounce back. But we would not bounce back. Actually, we only scored three points in our next game against Atlanta. And those three points came at the end of our first drive. In the first quarter, then absolutely nothing after. We finished with sub 200 total offensive yards. Well, the defense actually didn't do too bad. They only gave up 261, just slightly over 100 rushing, 154 passing. I mean, right now it's the offense. It's not doing anything. Brock Purdy, one touchdown, no interceptions. We did sack him once. Geno Smith, no touchdowns. One interception was also sacked once. In the rushing department, Crawford averaged about five yards a carry. Purdy, about four, or actually straight up four, one touchdown. Herbert, though, only 2.1 yards a carry. And again, they're not giving the rookie as equal carries. He's getting, I would say, half to a third of the carries on average. Though, when he did get his carries, didn't really get very far either. So, the offensive line... Definitely not doing fantastic for us. Stefan Diggs averaged about 10 yards a catch. We gave up a touchdown to Dalton Schultz. Meanwhile, for us, our best receiver was Wicks. Had less than 10 yards a carry. Pascal, about 6 yards a carry. Or reception. I think I said carry for both of them. Reception. Jelani Woods, though, at least had about 10 yards a catch. So there's that. 
Razul Douglas, Jabril Peppers, and Zayvon Collins were the leading tacklers, though majority of those tackles going to Atlanta. And we just gave up a lot of tackles for a last two for Mapu, maybe? Mapu? Not exactly sure how to pronounce that one. Omenahu had another two. Dana had two. Then Newsom, Gary, Brown, Cox, Petrie, all with one. We didn't have a single tackle for a loss, which is why I think the running game was doing so poorly because no one was doing anything for us. Tim Suttle got the sack for us and we gave up a split between Cox and Nelson. So once again, we're sitting here with a close division still. I mean, the Cowboys well atop two games ahead as they are three and one, but then us, the Giants, and the Eagles are all one and three. So this game against the Giants is actually pretty important. Though we're not seeing us do a whole lot up front. Now we have been missing uh, one of our um, starting offensive linemen, though he's not very highly rated. And if I remember correctly, this should be the game he's back or he's gone for one more. He is back in this one. So hopefully that'll see a boost to the running game. And we might start the rookie in this one just to see how well he does. We'll try to get through this game pretty quickly because I already feel like this video is getting close to, if not already at, about that hour mark. But we're going to watch the first possession, then try to move on through. As we start with a pass, play one, pick up six to Wicks. And it really doesn't seem how much I tell this team to run the ball first and foremost. Gino just really wants to pass the ball, so we'll let him pass. But I definitely want to get the running game going. Nice patient run once again there from Richards, and he picks up nine. As long as we give him a little bit of some time and a little bit of some space, he does well for us. As we'll stick with the ace formation, first and ten, right back down the middle, not finding a gap. So we'll switch up the formation a little bit, send the two tight ends up top, two receivers down below will be a drop back. Across the middle, we're going to find Mo Ali Cox, who comes in as that secondary tight end, picking up about eight yards. We'll leave two needed here on third as we go back to that ace formation. Richards, the lone back, took the handoff down the middle, picked up and splashed down fourth and two at the 42. But with this team struggling to open up the gates, let's try to see if we could help them out going for it here on fourth down. As I would like to find the fullback here on the quick dump off, does get the catch and will power through for the first down. Trying to get as many people involved in as many different ways as possible. Just trying to find the strengths of this team. As we go back to the running game, nice cut there from Richards. We'll pick up about three, maybe four on first. Again, still trying to be a little cautious with Richards at the get-go because that injury rating was not fantastic. But we'll get another carry here right down the middle, picking up not the first down. Apparently inches needed. He clearly thought he had the first down, but it will be a shotgun look here on third. As we're going to send Mo Ali Cox in motion down towards the bottom. Will it be a run? Will it be a pass? It will be a handoff. Richards has space until he meets the corner. Actually, no, Herbert checked in on that one. Those two running backs, honestly, all the running backs built very similar. Herbert, I want to say, is an inch shorter. Same weight as Richards. As he does check back in, almost breaking to the outside. Good tackle from number 59, Bayless. If he wasn't there, that one... Might have been a house call. Second and eight, we go out spread. Hand it off down the middle and a bit slow. Daniil that time with a pickup slam down. Let's sub out this running back, please. Or not. As we have a third and seven, he'll stay out there. With three down to the bottom, actually two down to the bottom, one up top. Gino, trying to buy some time, will step up and run. A little bit slow to get going. That's the age coming in, plus he takes the hit. But he picks up the first down for us, down to the 19. Whatever way we get the yards, I'll take it. As we have a first and 10 inside the red zone. Handoff down the middle, Richards. Bounce off the first tackler and is into the end zone. The first touchdown that we've at least seen for the rookie. Clifton Richards breaks the tackle and is gone. Now from here, I want to focus primarily on offensive red zone looks. Just because we've seen a lot from this defense already. They've been the better side, surprisingly. And we just have to hope that they continue to get the stops when we need them, though, on third and short, Justice Hill converts as they've worked the ball down to the 27. Picking up seven down to the red zone for second and three. Five more yards, Justice Hill knocked away Kendall Fuller. Second and ten, they pick up three, third and seven. They only manage five. Will be a fourth and two field goal that they hit Lucas Core. 
As for us, can we keep this offense moving here? Get another score? A lot of Clifton Richards to start. Pascal converts on third. First down, Richards, another four. Second and six, two. Leaving third and four. Knocked away Jalen Ramsey at the 44. I think we could go ahead and punt from here. Don't need to uh, risk anything quite this early on. Though I think we already went for a fourth down conversion earlier. So counterintuitive what I said, but it is what it is. Second and three, they pick up 13. Passing midfield, six more yards, Richie James Jr. Then four yards, Hendon Hooker gets the first down. Justice Hill follows up with four as they're down to the 30 with a one yard rush. Third and five, Hooker converts. The older of the rookies doing pretty well here with the Giants as they get six yards leaving third and one. And another first down to Richie James trying to grab a lead here before halftime though Brent Urban gets a big sack. Second and goal, they pick up eight third and goal. Touchdown, Jerry Judy with a minute left on the clock. Now, since the game didn't let me jump in in the Cowboys, I'm going to do it here against the Giants. So I'm just going to play a little bit versus our rivals, this time before halftime rather than the end of the game. As we're going to toss this one out, Zacchaeus will get the grab, turning up around the sideline, and will keep in bounds. The three Giants defenders do well to keep this clock moving. And we'll let it run, not calling the timeouts yet, though. A lot more time ran off the clock than what I was expecting. As we go, Richards down the middle. We'll pick up some yards and we'll start calling some timeouts. With just 11 seconds left, we'll come out, spread four receivers. Three to the right, one to the left. Wick's going to stay underneath as he's primarily been our number one target and we'll barely get that one off before the sack. Bayless has very much gotten involved early on and he is a rookie and doing, honestly, really well. So it was a good draft there. For the Giants, as we're trying to go up top, we have Wicks, who I guess just didn't see where the ball was. That was catchable. But we will inevitably have to settle for the field goal attempt here just before half. Trying to level this one up. Johnson, despite the rain, boots it through the uprights, and it'll be 10-10 at half. Which will quickly get the second half going. As it's 22 yards, Jerry Judy off the bat. Defense only allowing 10 points and a half, not too bad. Apparently, Jerry Judy wanted to double dip at the 22. As Justice Hill picks up seven, would love a big play from the defense and a penalty. You know, it's not on, like for the defense itself, but it helps out our defense as we have a third and 11 and Richie James converts. We have guys that we shouldn't be giving up these chunk plays, though. It's probably the lack of pass rush coming to hurt us as Trell Edmonds gets the knock away on third. We'll force yet again another field goal. 13-10, we just need this offense to score some points as Richards picks up six, five more, first and 10, six more yards, Richards, picking up three. Very next play, a lot of straight Richards as he gets seven, first down crossing midfield, Mo Ali Cox picks up 11, then a throw away by Gino, second and 10, 15 yards, Khalil Herbert checks in, getting the reception. First and 10, knock away. And you know what? We're at the 21, so why not jump in? Trying to take a lead once again here since, what, the first quarter, I believe, as we're going to toss this one out to Herbert. Luckily, that one was not picked. Honestly, that ball went right in between both Herbert and the defender. Could have easily been caught by either. As we have a third and 10 from Shotgun. Three up top, one down below. Gino going to scramble, throw on the run, and that time it is picked. Jumping the route, a nice dive there from Wicks. We'll get the tackle. We're gonna come away with no points as Abram gets the pick. Just Gino trying to do a little bit too much in these games and it's kind of costing us late as Richie James picks up 28. Don't know why he's going off as much as he is in this one. Knocked away Divine Diablo, first and eight. That wouldn't have made much sense, but a penalty will help us out. Third and 13, knocked away Thornhill which leads to another field goal. So now they're up six. A touchdown would just give us a one-point lead if, well, we could get down the field and get a touchdown plus the extra point. As Sam Hubbard sends us into the fourth quarter, we pick up two on second down, third and 15, and we pick up four. So this defense is going to need to come up big here for us as they're already well into plus territory. Hendon Hooker, three yards. Second and seven, Mark Andrews, 11. Didn't even know he was on this team. So we did at least well against the tight end up to this point. Third and short, 
Nice stop there from the defense, but another field goal makes it a nine point game. So once again, I wanna jump out here with this team because even if we get a touchdown, we're still down two possessions and it's gonna require the team itself to do something to get things going, though we let Daniil Hunter go around the edge untouched. Granted, running some play action to the side of Daniil Hunter, probably not the smartest idea. So let's go away from that entirely, set up the jet sweep, and once again, we're leaving the edge completely untouched. Well, on third and a country mile, can we get anything going here? Let's, well, I try to have Richard stay in to pass block. We have our man Jennings with a great adjustment to a bad pass. He's off to the races, 10-5 <laughs> touchdown. Well, hey, I will take that. If we do bad on first and second down, losing yards and then get that on third, perfectly fine with me. Jennings pulls us closer. That was probably the one bad play that we've seen from Bayless, who's normally been on that side. Granted, like I said, I'll take it. Now we just need the defense to get one more stop, and it's a third and two just as Hill converts, picking up five. Knocked away Razul Douglas. Second and ten, they pick up eight. Another third and short, and a sack from Brent Urban. Will be a fourth and ten, and they will punt away. So a chance. Just over two minutes left, we have two timeouts to try to find a late winner. We just need a field goal. We don't need the touchdown. As we're going to toss this one out to Richards, who will get the catch and slam down once again, landing out of bounds, though we hit the two-minute warning. So for some reason, Madden, with no graphics for it, just sends us right back into the next play. Quick dump off. Going to find the tight end, picking up the first down as Christian Derisaw. Shaken up. We cannot afford to lose one of our best offensive linemen, especially in a passing situation late. But unfortunately, that's exactly what has happened. So the guy who's been playing guard is going to step in at tackle. He's primarily a pass blocking guy. And now the tight end, Woods, struggling to catch the ball. Apparently our tight end coach is fine with their tight ends dropping the passes, as we've seen that from Mo Ali Cox and now Woods. Second and ten. Under center, another quick dump off. Why do we keep running this play over and over again? If we do the same thing here on third and five, I'm just gonna jump in with this offense just so we're getting some different plays. And yeah, it's the same book as it's a sack Daniil Hunter. So on fourth and six, I'm stepping in because for some reason the playbook is broken and we're just running the same play over and over again. But we need to get a first down here. As we step out, we need Jen, not even Jennings. That was Zacchaeus. Ball gets swatted away by Bayless. And with one minute, three seconds left in a timeout in our pocket, it's about done. They just have to run out the clock. Hendon Hooker, really, I mean, he played a great game. He converted so many first downs running the ball as well as passing the ball. He and was it Richie James and Jerry Judy. They just kept picking up the big plays. Justice Hill, who was just solid, consistently converting third downs when they were like third and three, consistently pick up the five. And as we tick under 30 seconds left, they'll take one more knee and it will be another loss. The Giants will go ahead of us in our own division. We'll just have to wait to see what the Eagles do and see if this team can bounce back before the trade deadline, though. There's not many players we could trade for. And it actually looks like Madden is broken again, so we're not going to get an end screen here. We'll run a play, and then I'll just have to quit out. Should keep the score going, although they may actually not snap the ball. So I'm going to have to see what I can do here. Great job, Madden. Now, unfortunately, due to the actual in-game freezing we weren't able to quit out which normally saves everything that happens so what i'm going to do here is actually just force a loss and we'll continue on from there because it was a loss we went through the whole game and we didn't perform well so we will just have to force the loss and let's see who was away so the giants were the away team so we will force the away win and we'll see if we could bounce back against the packers with one more quick sim through week and the slide continues and what looks like a fourth quarter comeback from the packers they win 
27-21, though the offense was moving. 382 yards, but only 50 rushing, 332 passing. Now, I will say in this one, I just straight up sim through the week rather than jumping in and using our custom playbook, so that probably has something to do with that. But the defense also gave up 337 yards, so just not great. Geno Smith, two touchdowns, no interceptions. That part good. Was sacked once. Deshaun Watson, three touchdowns, not good. One pick, good. No sacks, not good. Very synonymous throughout this so far. Bijan Robinson, great game, over 100 yards, about six yards a carry. Damian Harris, three and a half, plus a touchdown. Watson, okay. Herbert did get the touchdown, but only averaged 2.5 yards running the ball. And I believe actually our uh, rookie running back was out of this game with a practice injury, had turf toe or something like that. Pascal had a good game though, 127 and a touchdown. Wicks also pretty good, a little bit under 100, but not bad. St. Brown, one touchdown on 40 yards, five catches. Marley Cox got a touchdown, and it looks like we gave up one to one of their tight ends. But Tremaine Edmonds did lead both teams in tackles with 11. Now, how did the tackles for losses go? Because, yeah, we continually we're giving up a lot. Two for Williams, then one for Johnson, Warner, Harris. We did get one with Tim Settle, but then on Wuzurike? Maybe is how that one's pronounced. He got one, Wosu got one, and Murphy got one. So we're just giving up a lot of tackles for a loss. And I wish, th I wish there was a stat that really showed us who was giving up all of these so we know which lineman we needed to make a change for. Devon Godshot got the sack. Now, who got the pick was Kendall Fuller. And it's the first miss of the season for Brian Johnson. He did miss one field goal, his only field goal attempt of the day. And as it currently stands, we are the second worst offense in terms of yardage while being the best defense. So average out middle of the pack, but we're actually just not doing very good. So need to make some changes somehow, some way. Gino has not started this year off very well. Five touchdowns, four interceptions, throwing just 60% completion. As for the running backs, Herbert... 2.8 a carry, not good. Two touchdowns, he did fumble once. Richards, 2.5, one. So it doesn't seem, it seems like the offensive line is what's really holding us back at this point. So maybe we could try to shake some things up there. There's just not any options for trading for different offensive linemen at this point. We'll see if that changes down the line. Wicks, still our leading receiver, though Pascal is pretty close and actually has the slightly better average per catch though per game does go to Wick's way. One touchdown for all of these guys up top. Now, when it comes to sacks given up, most of them have gone to Morgan Moses, giving up five. Two for Saldervary, who has had some starts because of injury. Only one for Glowinski, one for Sorosdal in his starts, and then none for Derisa. So Derisa is playing fantastic, but I would just wish there was some sort of stat here for rushing situations. Tackles for a loss given up would be nice. Jermaine Edmonds, though, leads us in tackles with 44. Our leading tackle for a loss guy is Tim Suttle. He also missed the first game. He also, unfortunately, leads us in sacks. Two and a half. You don't really want your DT leading you in sacks. Two for Edmonds. Urban has one, but that's probably from a rush DT spot. Diablo has one. So our actual outside edge rushers have combined for one sack through the first seven weeks. Not good. Interception-wise, two for Fuller, and then one for Edmonds. Kicking, apparently there was another miss for Brian Johnson. It must have been in a sim one that I just didn't see, or it was in the Giants resim. probably what that was. And obviously the stats are going to be a little bit shaken up from that, but it's what we had to do. But not as good of a season as I thought we were going to have with how that first game went. I thought this team would have been playing a lot better. Defensively, I do think they're playing better than I imagined they were going to. But offensively, we're still missing a step. And I think the offensive line, the run blocking isn't there. We're upgrading that where we can with the coaching uh, points, the staff points. But we really have to look forward probably to the draft. So next episode, we might get through the remainder of the season. So before... We leave here, which we will shortly. I do just want to take a quick look at our draft board and see 
how these guys are looking. So our favorite wise, the quarterback is 95% scouted and from a brief look that I saw, doesn't look like he's gonna be a future starter. He only has decent to solid throw power, though he looks like he might be able to run the ball a little bit. B, deep accuracy and then medium and short are both C's. So looks like a developmental guy that I wouldn't take before the third round, most likely. As for the other guys, these offensive linemen, they actually look like they might be a little bit promising. Miles Sloan here in the third to fourth round. Please tell me you're strong. Solid to good. Hopefully that's on the good side. And across the board besides pass block power, which is a D, he just doesn't look to be a, a power guy. He might be a potential starter for us. Considering how much we're struggling, a lot of our guys are getting older. The other guard in Dante Harden. Looks like he's not a pass blocker, at least with the C there. His strength also solid to good, though might be better across the board. At least we don't see any Ds or Fs, so still some more information to find out on these two, but they potentially might be something for us to go after. Over on the defensive side, a pass cover middle linebacker with C to F block shed, but B zone could be depth. Jamie French actually looks like he could be pretty good. Without the finished scouting, just from that brief overview, actually it does look pretty good. There's a developmental corner here in Adonis Monroe with a B zone, and then the free safety with a C zone and B to D man. Maybe more of a man cover with a B tackle and B hit power. Did I say man cover? I meant strong safety, yeah. It's been a long day. Either way, this is where we're leaving this episode off at. Promising points here and there, but definite work that needs to be continued. So we'll see how they do in the second half of the season there. It's all games throughout the remainder. We already had our bye week. We have the Cowboys up quickly as well, who are currently on top of the division four and three. Giants four and three, Eagles two and five, and then us one and five. So at least the first game went well. We just need to see more of that. So to see if we have more of that, make sure you guys hit that bell icon on the bottom right or scroll down, hit the actual subscription button and tick that bell icon so you're notified of when these videos go live. This series is posted every single Wednesday and Saturday with the traditional Rams franchise every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. So you guys have six full length videos every single week, plus all the shorts highlighting everything that happens in these games that I'm now finally getting posted the day after these games come out. So make sure you guys are staying tuned if you don't wanna see the spoilers. But until next time, where there's more work to do, we'll see you then. Bye.